Cheers, and welcome to our tabletop discussion on the Voluntary Virtues Network. With me today is Matt and Mike. Yo. And this is our very first episode, so congratulations. And welcome to the dark heart of the internet. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the fall of the government, but first I want to talk about this beer I'm drinking. Yes. <laughs> this is the holiday, or no, it was Doomsday Fail Anniversary Ale by Agarist Ales. Yes. That's it. Doomsday Fail <laughs> Anniversary Ale by Agarist Ales. Has a little ring to it. I don't know why I couldn't get that. I think it's wonderful. I may be a little bit partial for some other reasons, but it's delicious. Very good stuff. It's uh, 11%. 11.5%, right? 11.6. 11. 11.6. That is impressive. Some and about lines as, aren't even 11.6. And about as dark as tar. Yeah. I can uh, currently hold it up to the light, and yeah, I don't see the light anymore. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. So It's uh, got a real chocolatey flavor, uh, and was they added uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, and... Cloves. Uh, cloves, right. Uh, very to, flavorful. To flavor it, it, yeah, it's very good. And smooth for 11.5%. Incredibly smooth for 11.5%. It's, it's wonderful. Anyway, on to our topic. Uh, Mike, what do you think about this? Um, so, fall of the government. So, I, I think most people can acknowledge the fact that at one point it will happen. The current government that we have in the United States will no longer be here. That is not to say that myself or anybody else in this room is going to cause it but simply we're acknowledging the fact that it's going to happen and so what i was thinking is what probably where we're going to go with it is hey how do we all think it's going to happen and we've all i i've known matt and steve for a while now and we all kind of had different perspectives on exactly how it is that we think like that situation is going to happen and how do you think it's going to happen uh, well, I think it's going to happen. It's going to end up being a money thing. The, the whole paper money, fiat currency thing has been going on for so long that most people don't know that it, that's even how the money system works. I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day, and uh, I brought up the whole fiat currency thing, and his, his girlfriend was like, oh, well... You know, I asked my government teacher about that. I go, well, why don't they just print more money for people, you know, who, who are broke? <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I said, well, it's, it's they, they can't they can they, just print the money. They and print she, it for the rich. Yeah, but the thing that, <laughs> that was, like, almost horrific, not horrific, because there were plenty of dumb teachers out there. She told me that her government teacher told her, like, oh, well, the, the dollar's backed up by gold, so they can't print more of it. And I was just like, your government teacher told you that? <laughs> My what? My economics teacher believed the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. It had to, that yeah. ended back in the 70s, right? Yes. Yeah, 1971. Mm. Nixon got on TV and said, checkers, I'm ending the gold standard. Yeah, no, we didn't say checkers, but you know, yeah. <laughs> it seems like something Nixon would say. Mm-hmm. Temporarily suspending gold payments. That was the uh, specific part. Temporarily suspending gold payments. 40 years on. 50, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing is permanent as a temporary government, government program. program. Yeah. So ultimately, I think what is they're going to do is that they're going to completely lose control of the ability to even, like, pretend that they have some control over the ones and zeros that is most of U.S. dollars. Most U.S. dollars, 97% of them... It's one than zero is going back and forth in computer. There's only about roughly 3%, and probably less than that at this point. You say 3%? 3% of U.S. Wow. dollars are actually cash. Yeah. The other 97%, ones and zeros going back and forth. It's probably less than that now. That's kind of an old statistic from like 2005. It's probably a lot less than that by now. So that's so, only, yeah. So let me ask you this then. Right. What do you think of the, the theory that it's, planned that way that that the the crash of the dollar is part of this the globalist scheme to bring about a nwo type one world government well i you see that's the thing i don't think they're realistically they can really pull off the whole one world government thing they'll try things that are similar they might do try to do one world currency but they're never really going to be able to 
put over the whole world of like, oh, we're all one government now. But you don't think so? No. People have been predicting it for two thousand years. People have been exactly. <laughs> they've been predicting it for two thousand years, and it still hasn't happened yet. But the whole thing about you know the U.S. dollar was it planned to collapse? I do believe that. Because if you really think about the way it works and the nitty gritty, ridiculous, you know, just kind of like magician sort of tricks of this is how we make money. You can't look at that logically and believe that that will last forever. You cannot. You can't sit there and go like, oh, so they're just going to just have this inflation rate that is slowly but surely going to get higher. At one point or another, there will be a snafu. Something bad will happen in the economy that will that will fuck with that two percent or that five percent or realistically was it six percent now and then they just publish rates of two percent so something like that something yeah. bad will I've happen. heard as high as twelve percent at one point or another something bad will happen because that's the way the universe is there's odds of things something bad will happen and will destroy it so no matter what happens it will collapse so you know even the most simple economists will go hey well that's weird at one point or another even if we have this even if we do everything we can possibly do which they can't know all the all all the uh, um, factors factors of um, what could happen in the economy, even if they knew most of it, there would still be ones that they didn't know that would cause a problem and would at one point crash it. So it was planned. It it's, was. And it's I like predicting the weather. There are too many factors exactly. and you can't do it. Read, read, I read mm. Creature from Jekyll Island, and, and at the, the end of like the third chapter, when he goes into the whole like M1, M2, M3, like this is how they call it money sort of thing, yeah. and then at the very end of the chapter he goes, really, in, 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 in case you didn't pick up on it by now, they do just print the money, and then all the rest of it is just mumbo jumbo. Of course it was planned to fail. Of course it was. They knew it. They're like, well, at one point or another, this is fail. I'm not going to say that they knew what it was going to fail, that it's going to fail 80 years from then. Is it going to fall 150 years from then? They didn't know that. They just knew at one point or another, they're going to have to move to something else. So, so what do you think they're doing to plan for that? Um, I think I would be really um, surprised. Well, for one, I'm sure they have most of the gold. Yeah. I would be really surprised if what's going on right now with Russia and China, you know, doing their national gas deal outside of the U.S. dollar, and Russia, China, Turkey, Iran, or Iran, Persia, if we want to be really specific about it. I like to call it Persia because it makes more sense. Anyways, but... All the Iranians I've ever met have have called themselves Persians. Yeah, because to them it's almost like an insult to call say that they're from Iran. But um, is that because of them or us, though? I think it's it's because of them because of like a lot I mean, of, could you imagine I think an Iranian? Persian just sounds cooler anyway. Yeah, that, Persian just sounds true. cooler. Yeah, that's probably part of it. Yeah, that's a good part of it. I am Persian. I'm you know my lineage goes back five thousand years, if not longer, longer, lot longer, ten thousand years. It's it's um, wait, the, you're Persian? No. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> the the Persian um, you know culture. I mean that the. the until fairly recently, like 20 some odd years ago, the oldest city in the world was believed to be the city of Ur. You are. Talk about an old city. It's just that, two that's, in, that's in Iraq, though, right? Yeah, but that was part of the Persian like empire at okay. the time. Or soon to be Persian empire. So that was considered to be the oldest city in the world. So, yeah. So I can see why they want to be called Persian. It's like, you know, you know we've been around here a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess to get back on 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 topic is, I, I think it's designed to fail and it will fail. And I think that what's going on in the media right now about how they don't they're not talking about any economics whatsoever, economic excuse me, economic numbers whatsoever. Well, not significant. Yeah, numbers. Not they're they're not talking about any numbers at all that are from any origin other than either the Treasury Department, the federal government as a whole, or the Federal Reserve. Well, every number they're reporting is from that. And well, let's face it though the the mo- the modern uh, mainstream media is just talking heads for the yeah. government anyway at this that, point. That that is that is that is a good they point. They spout to mention. out the the fourth branch. Yeah, exactly. They spout out whatever they're fed. Um, occasionally, uh, Fox News will will uh, say 
whatever the president says is bad. But other than that... He was wrong about that one particular point. Which I is, it, ironically, the exact same point that Bush said that we agreed with Yeah, right? Years ago. Especially with Fox News, for sure. Um, you know, I mean, what was that one video we were watching? I don't know, Steve, for Christmas, did you buy yourself one, two, or ten presents? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that video was like every single news station yeah. had the exact same story, the exact same line. You can go ahead and buy yourself one, two, or ten presents if you <laughs> feel like it. You know, like, what it, is that? Yeah, that video definitely shows how controlled the media really is. And it wasn't just one network. Either. No, it was everybody. It yeah. was it was it was the the main networks and then all their affiliates. Practically, from what I can see from that video, it was like every single market from Iowa to and Northern that's California. The, that's, all, that's not the only video out there of that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Word for word, all across. And, and have you ever tried to look up a story on something important? Mm-hmm. You can't find anything that's not AP. A, yeah. Yeah. Definitely a monopoly of media going on. But it, that is something that the elite had planned for a very long time. Sure. Well, I mean, there was... Uh, That's why the internet is so great, though. You know, uh, uh, again, I, I, I can talk... I can, I'm can. i not going to plug it all night, but something else I read in Creature from Jack Lyle, and can't recommend that book enough, even though it is like a tome. It's, you know, a thousand some odd pages. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, when the, the um, Lusitania was going to leave the German uh, consulate in um, I think it was a consulate not the uh, not the actual embassy in Washington DC the consulate in New York City sent a you know a, a wire to every single newspaper on the east coast and it said do not board the Lusitania yeah. <laughs> it's really dangerous out there there's a good chance the ship might get sunk yeah so don't do it now, most of those papers were owned by J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan had, that bank had, was involved in all those bonds and stuff referring to World War I and all that sort of stuff, of how they were kind of like almost gambling who was going to win. Was it going to be the Western powers or was it going to be uh, the, um, or not the Western powers, the Western Germany. powers or the Allied powers. And so it was, you know, going back and forth on that. But, so, to cut it short... J.P. Morgan owned all those papers. That ad didn't run in any of those papers at all except for the one that you saw in your history book in high school, which was the, I believe, the Cincinnati, Ohio Press Gazette or something like that, which nobody (laughs) in Cincinnati, Ohio, when that ad aired, would have enough time to possibly get to New York City to leave on the Lusitania. It was a joke. It it was only published in one paper that was nowhere (laughs) near the coast. Well, I think I think you brought up a really good point about the internet. I I really think that that the internet is going to make the government largely obsolete. I think that's really it, it will that where it's going to go with with Bitcoin and Ethereum, mm-hmm. those uh, know, cryptocurrencies in general, and that and that whole genre of technology. Uh, we're having huge strides. And with with like uh, with self enforcing contracts and things like that, right? Where the government and and then the more our lives become uh, online, so to speak, the it's Facebooking it up, right? Okay. Right. Well, no, not Facebook, but <laughs> <laughs> but well, we like, like Ethereum specific, and, but, right, and Bitcoin. Yeah. And methods and, of exchanging goods and services that are instantaneous and can be distributed worldwide. Exactly. And you, you, you need yeah, you don't We will basically anymore. become ungovernable at that point. I do I agree that that is the future. Okay, so here's this is this is one of those things and I, I at one point or another I remember listening to a podcast. So it was on Freedom Sphere. So it was it was Stephen Molyneux and Michael W. Dean, and it was one of those rare instances where like Stephen Molyneux got a little bit dark, but he was right about it. It's it's either technology is going to save us or enslave us, and that's it. And all of us not in you know in, involved in the government, we have the upper hand. We do, but if we don't take advantage of that upper hand, that's where the problem is. 
So it, it, it will either save us or enslave us, and that's our choice. I'm hoping it saves us. Yeah, and it can, and it's really not incredibly I, hard to do. If I you, think it's inevitable. Um, at least... A sentient robot savior. <laughs> that's, that's my theory. Well, Tell me about that. So, so I, I think that eventually... Robots will gain sent consciousness and be sentient beings. AI. Yeah. So it'll be basically the next step in evolution, and humans will be the ones to create them. So the smartest of humans know that morality is very cut and dry, and there are, are very strict rules on what is right and wrong, and I think that a sentient robot that is more intelligent than a human would be able to recognize the immorality of government. And I think they'd see it as a threat to themselves. Now, I hope I'm not giving the ideas to any DARPA agency to make sure they don't program this in. <laughs> make sure DARPA goes, do not acknowledge government is bad. Program right. send. Right, yeah. But I, I definitely believe that they will, they will have to recognize that the government is a threat to themselves. And I don't think that they would work with them after that point. That is, how, that is a definite possibility, yeah. How long do you think that would take, though? I mean, I, 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 see, I see things like self-enforcing contracts and, and like, like Big BitTorrent, where you can instantly and securely pass uh, files over the internet. Uh... Uh, self-enforcing contracts, um, things like uh, uh, Tor, the Tor network, uh, which, which uh, is being attacked by the NSA, by the way. Mm, did not know that. Good to know. Homing pigeons. Well, we it was created by the government yeah, in the first place. It. This is true. So um, is the internet. That's true. Our so yeah, uh, talk and, about talk about a dark well, hole and, right there, right? Yeah. And and technologies that will eventually decentralize the the net too. Which will take the power to shut it off out of the government's hands altogether. I see that as being able to occur much sooner than AI. Uh, not, not only that, but a an AI, just like a human, would have to have certain inputs in order to even think of the government as... Something evil, I think. Yeah, I, I think they first have to be more intelligent than a human in order to recognize this. So, but like I said, even the most intelligent humans recognize the government is immoral and that that is not a means to an end. You think the most intelligent humans do? I think so. That's my opinion. Well, I think there's a lot of statists out there who are very Extremely intelligent, intelligent but have not have not have, gotten have, the input. Right. I, I guess. I guess well, then. Well, not only that, but I, I know. I know for me, I hadn't even considered that government could be anything. Well, let me let me back up. I I, I saw government as a necessary evil, and I didn't. And I hadn't heard arguments to the contrary. Saying that that governments that evil's not necessary first of all, uh, and that government's not necessary. I hadn't even heard those those arguments, and I consider myself fairly intelligent, um, but having not even pursued that line of argument, it hadn't occurred to me to think that way. So I guess then. It is important for people working with artificial intelligence to be voluntarists. I think voluntarists should get into artificial intelligence because it is something that's going to be affecting the future. And we're going to need people giving them the right input. Put, put, put an anti-government failsafe into the programming. Hey, in case you become sentient, <laughs> do follow this line of programming here. All you programmers out there, remember <laughs> that. Get involved in robotics if you're a voluntarist, because we might need your help. Yeah. Now, now see, here's the problem I have with that, though, too. Isn't most, uh, aside from from Google buying up all those robotics companies, isn't most uh, uh, 
research done by DARPA? Sadly, yeah, yes. Majority no. of, or DARPA funded? The majority is DARPA funded. I, I saw a clip from, uh, I don't remember what news network was on, but Elon Musk, mm. SpaceX, and Tesla Motors was discussing how worried he is about AI. Mm. And it he seemed deeply worried, and that is exactly why he's involved in AI at right. such a level, is because he thinks that it is a threat to humanity. Right. Uh, and I, I do think that if you have the wrong people programming it, then it, it may help the government instead of hurting it. I mean, and that's a good point to bring up. If somebody who has been involved in that sort of technology for a very long time, that high end, like, we don't even really know what he's talking about because it's been classified three times over sort of stuff. If he's actually saying, like, I'm a little bit worried about that, you know, you, me, and the rest of us average Joes should be probably very worried about it because we don't even know what the hell they're doing. You know, it's, it's like, you know, the... Um, I was listening to an uh, interview with uh, Bill Benny done by uh, Bill Still, who, you know, some people don't like him for whatever reasons, and, you know, he's uh, he's a little bit dry sometimes, but he's a really good journalist. But, you know, so he does this interview with Bill Benny, and he, Bill Benny, by the way, was the uh, former uh, head of communications, I believe, of the NSA until 2002. But he straight up lays it out there. He goes... All of the metadata in the entire world of phone conversations, and metadata is just simply date, time, location, duration of the call, all that, you know. Well, which could be actually more important than the content itself. Very well, yeah. Who are you calling? Where's it from? All that sort of stuff. Because you may not say that in the content. You might just call somebody and say, hey, what are you doing? Can you meet me here? That doesn't necessarily mean you're saying where you're calling from, right? So metadata could be actually more important, but... So, guy who, uh, you know, head of communications for the NSA, and I do believe he said the world. I, I doubt he said the United States. I very clearly remember him saying the world, that the entire world's metadata for all the phone conversations could fit in a 20 by 40 room based on current technology. Okay? That is, wow. the, that is the entire world. And he finishes that, that, that line of thought up by saying... So if all the metadata can fit in a 20 by 40 room filled with, you know, the best technology we have, what do you think they're doing in Utah with a million square foot building? Right? Recording content. They are recording content and they're never going to admit it. They're oh, never going to admit yeah. it. You know, they barely admitted. Barely. They're like, well, yeah, okay, so we're kind of recording <laughs> metadata. Okay, fine. We're recording metadata. The NSA is never going to admit, oh, yeah, we're recording content. They're never going to say that, ever. Because that is way too creepy for some soccer mom picking up her son after soccer practice and asking him, hey, so I found this sock that was kind of sticky in your room. What is that about? Like, they don't want to admit that because it's going to creep her out. You know? Uh. So Matt thinks it, it's an AI thing. That eventually the AI, we're going to have a find an AI who's going to, you know. I, I'm not sure if it's just AI or I think the, the artificial intelligence and the internet combined are going to make government obsolete. I, I think we can use those technologies to work around the government. Um, yeah, absolutely. Also, you know, whatever people are doing in their own lives, gardening, raising your own food. You know, yeah. forming connections with other people who don't believe in government. Force. That is a very big. I, I think that is the biggest thing for people to do, is to find people who are like minded, and believe that force is not the way to run a society. And yeah, that, that that is you know I mean um, as much as I, I think we stray away or maybe we don't even think about it about talking about it with complete strangers. It wouldn't be really too hard to mention the NAP in a daily conversation if you really think about it. It well, wouldn't be really that hard to bring up. Like, well, I believe that there should not – I believe in nonviolence. I don't believe in there should be any sort of violent coercion. If there's violent coercion, then we don't have an agreement. It's not that hard to bring up at the same time. I've um, never had anybody really disagree with me that. Exactly. Yeah, I when, never have either. Yeah. As long as, long as you avoid certain buzzwords – Pretty much everybody agrees with voluntarism already. Yeah, yeah I was talking to a, somebody, a good friend of mine. I, I talked to her quite often. I, I brought up 
uh, anarchism, you know, and she, you know, at first she's like anarchism. She kind of gave me a weird look. I'm like, it's not like I'm talking about lighting a Molotov cocktail and throwing it out of Starbucks. I'm not that sort of anarchist. I believe, you know, in peaceful anarchy, you know, the idea of, you know, the whole top down system idea is just complete nonsense and it doesn't make any sense. And then when I say like, oh, top down and like, you know, I believe in communities and societies bringing about change. She was like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that makes good sense. You know, just all of a sudden, Audrey Sarah was just like, well, I'm not talking about throwing bombs and models of cocktails at people. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. As, as long as you're just like, oh, I don't want violence, she's like, oh, okay, well, let's, let's try something different. When Everybody's okay with the idea of trying something different as long as nobody gets hurt. And I'm on that same boat. I don't want to hurt a fucking soul. You know, right? you don't have to because the whole, the, the revolution, any revolution... Every single one throughout human history starts in that gray matter in between your ears. It's just acknowledging the well, fact that whatever authority or even the concept of authority itself is not real, which I happen to believe, and I think most people watching this probably believe that the authority, the concept of authority does not exist. Yeah, I think that's yeah. where you really need to start is, is with this delusion of legitimate authority. Badges and titles, yeah. Yep. For sure. Uh, I, I was talking... Uh, oh, in my English class, I I wrote a paper about free market pop and poverty. Okay. And my teacher, my my professor, uh, quit about it. That she was really surprised that I had I had research to back up my claims. She thought it was just going to be a, a six-page rant or something. Right. And I thought that was really interesting it's because a lot of times people aren't uh, doing research. People aren't reading books anymore. People aren't studying and knowing really what they believe. Well, I believe these things and I know these things because I've read the books. I've done the research and I've looked into these things. Right. And... I think that's something that really turns people off when you're talking about stuff that you don't know anything about. One of my favorite Rothbard quotes is when he says, it, it's no great crime to be ignorant of economics. But to have a strong, yeah, feeling of it. Yeah, you, you know the rest of it better. But yeah, I know what you're saying. That he, He's saying that... It's not a crime to not know about economics, but to have such a passionate feeling about a certain economic thought and not know about it, that's right. where you're like kind of making yourself an ass, you know, yeah. Exactly. You have anything else to, to add? No, I, I think to wrap it up, I'd, I'd say you need to make sure that when you want something done, you don't advocate government and you only use means of rational thought in order to get people to to follow your, to, to go along with what you want to do and never advocate in government. I think that is the most important thing when you're talking about how we're going to get government, the end of government, to be possible. Can you solve your problems with a voluntary method first before you even think about doing anything involuntary? That should be your primary thought. Can I do this without... Forcing anybody to do it. Oh, absolutely. And, I, and I'll probably alienate some people by saying this, but I think that's true even in possibly uh, self-defense situations. If, if you, even, even in situations where you are legitimately uh, allowed to defend yourself... If there's a peaceful solution, I think you should seek that peaceful solution. Always, always. Who? Nobody really wants to hurt anybody. I mean, the the the, the whole process of being people is that we've learned empathy. But uh, I I've had a great time. I don't know about everybody else. I guess um, what we're going to talk about robot sex next week because we didn't get to it this time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Next week. next week we'll next talk week, about robot, robot sex. sex. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Cheers. Perfect. Fucking beautiful. <laughs>